Why tornadoes are so freakishly powerful and weirdly picky. If you've ever seen a tornado even just on video, you probably remember how your jaw dropped a little. Because a tornado isn't just weather, it's nature throwing a full-blown tantrum. Not with thunder, not with rain, but with a twisting, shrieking column of air that touches the sky and eats the ground. And the worst part? It doesn't even need a reason. One moment the sky is sunny, the next, it looks like the heavens decided to spin a roulette wheel and land on chaos. Roofs fly, cows float, semi-trucks get tossed like soda cans, and some Somehow, that one weird garden gnome in your neighbor's lawn? Untouched. Tornadoes are terrifying because they're personal. They choose a street, not a city. A tree, not a forest. Your house, not your neighbor's. But what exactly is a tornado? How does it form? And why does it have such a flair for dramatic timing? Let's crack this spinning mystery wide open. First off, tornadoes don't just appear out of nowhere like your ex's texts. They need very specific ingredients. Think of it like a dangerous smoothie recipe. Warm, moist air near the surface from the Gulf of Mexico. Cold, dry air above, often from Canada. A horizontal wind shear, meaning wind going different speeds or directions at different heights. A strong thunderstorm, ideally a supercell. Mix all of these in just the right ratios, and boom! Nature's Blender gives you a rotating updraft. This rotation is key. When wind changes speed or direction with height, it creates something called wind shear. That causes horizontal tubes of air to start spinning. If a strong updraft from a thunderstorm tilts that spinning air vertical, congratulations! You might get a tornado, but it doesn't always happen. The vast majority of thunderstorms, even the scary ones, never produce tornadoes. It's like having all the ingredients for cake, but the oven refuses to turn on. That's why forecasting tornadoes is so tricky. We know the recipe, but the chef, Mother Nature, is unpredictable, and sometimes tornadoes tease. A funnel cloud may dip halfway down, swirl menacingly, and then nothing. The drama, the flare, only to ghost us. Why here? Why so many? If you live in the United States, especially anywhere between Texas and South Dakota, congrats. You've won the tornado lottery. This area, known as Tornado Alley, is the most tornado-prone region in the world. But why? Because it's a geographical hot mess, in the best way. Warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico collides with dry, hot air from the desert southwest and cold air from Canada. And the central U.S. has no mountains running east to west to block these air masses, so they meet like awkward Tinder dates. But with lightning, this clash of air systems creates the perfect environment for supercells, the massive thunderstorms that birth tornadoes. In fact, about 75% of all the world's tornadoes happen in the U.S. That's not a brag, that's a warning. But Tornado Alley isn't locked in place. Recent research suggests tornado activity is migrating eastward. States like Tennessee, Mississippi, Mississippi, and even parts of the southeast are seeing more action. It's like the tornado party is hitting the road and bringing chaos with it. And guess what? Urban development may make tornado impacts worse. More concrete, more heat, more structures to tear through. Climate meets civilization, and tornadoes RSVP yes. What makes a tornado? So, tornado-y? The average tornado lasts about 10 minutes and travels a few miles. But the monsters? Those are rare. The EF4s and EF5s on the enhanced Fujita scale. Those can last over an hour and leave a trail of destruction up to a mile wide and 50 miles long. Tornadoes are rated based on the damage they cause, not their wind speed directly. Because guess what? We can't really measure the wind inside a tornado. It's like trying to stick a thermometer in a blender. With knives. EF0. Little damage, mostly to trees and signs. EF1 to EF2. Roofs gone. Cars flipped. Cows slightly alarmed. EF3 to EF4. Walls down. Homes obliterated. EF5. Welcome to Oz. And the wind speeds? They can exceed 200 miles per hour. That's faster than most Formula One cars, in a circle, with debris. But it's not just wind. Tornadoes create pressure drops so intense they can explode buildings from the inside out. They toss debris that becomes deadly projectiles. They can even pick up water from lakes and dump it miles away, like nature's very rude water park ride. They're physics wrapped in drama, wrapped in chaos, with a soundtrack by Screaming Wind. And here's a wild thought. Some tornadoes are invisible. If there's not enough condensation or debris, they don't show up clearly. But the wind is still very much there. Imagine getting knocked over by something you can't see. Spooky. Can you outrun one? Don't try. Please. Even a slow tornado moves around 10 to 20 miles per hour, but some race along at 60 miles per hour or more. On foot? You're toast. In a car? You might make it if the roads are clear, if the tornado isn't shifting direction, and if your tires aren't feeling dramatic. But honestly, the safest place is underground. A basement. A storm.
storm shelter, a bathtub with a mattress on top if that's all you've got. Because tornadoes don't play fair. And no, opening your windows won't equalize the pressure. That myth is as outdated as floppy disks. And don't try to take selfies with it either. Yes, people have done this. Yes, they regret it. And please, don't chase tornadoes unless you're a trained meteorologist or someone with insurance for your insurance. The weirdest tornado truths. Tornadoes don't just destroy things. Sometimes they mess with reality. Chickens have been found completely plucked, but alive. Straw has been embedded into telephone poles. A house can be lifted, spun, and set down almost intact, while its neighbor is reduced to splinters. It's the randomness that haunts people. Tornadoes are selective, personal, almost petty. They're the Regina George of natural disasters. And then there's the sound. People say it sounds like a freight train, but imagine the loudest vacuum cleaner in the world that also hates your garage. Are tornadoes getting worse? Short answer? It's complicated. Climate change might not be increasing the total number of tornadoes, but it does seem to be affecting their patterns. Tornado seasons are shifting. Clusters of tornadoes are becoming more common, and more tornadoes are popping up outside of traditional tornado alley. That means more people, in more places, might be at risk, often without the infrastructure or warning systems to deal with it. And since tornadoes strike quickly and without much notice, preparation is everything. A 30-second warning can mean the difference between life and loss. The emotional toll is also growing. Survivors often describe the experience as surreal, a moment when time slows and everything becomes wind, noise, and fear. Trauma doesn't vanish when the sky is clear. It lingers. And then there's the rebuilding, the insurance claims, the lost heirlooms. Tornadoes don't just rearrange neighborhoods, they rewrite lives. And perhaps most haunting, there's still so much we don't understand. Why do some storms drop a tornado while others don't? Why do tornadoes sometimes split into multiple vortexes? Why do cows always look so unbothered on the news afterward. Tornadoes on other planets? Yes, we're going there. Jupiter's Great Red Spot? That's essentially a planet-sized storm, swirling for centuries. While it's not a tornado in the traditional sense, it's a reminder that violent, swirling weather isn't unique to Earth. Mars has dust devils, small whirlwinds that can tower miles high thanks to its thin atmosphere and dusty surface. And on Saturn's moon Titan? Some scientists speculate that methane storms could produce twisting wind patterns. So, tornadoes might be more universal than we think. They're just tailored to their planet's style. It's comforting, in a bizarre way, to know that even other worlds deal with chaotic weather. Tornadoes remind us how fragile control is, how one spinning column of air can humble highways, flatten homes, and erase decades in seconds. But they also show us something else, resilience. In the aftermath, neighbors help neighbors, communities rebuild, people tell stories, share warnings, hug tighter. Tornadoes are terrifying, mysterious, sometimes tragically poetic. They don't just twist the sky, they twist our hearts, our histories, our sense of certainty. And and still, we watch the clouds, listen for the sirens, and hope that when the wind picks a direction, it turns away. Because as humans, we're pretty good at building again. But some things, memories, losses, and garden gnomes that somehow survive, stay with us forever. And that's the thing about tornadoes. They're not just meteorological events, they're emotional ones too. We've thrown satellites at the sky, we've chased storms with radar vans and drones. But even with all that technology, tornadoes still slip through our understanding. Why do some last minutes and others over an hour? What triggers one storm to rotate and another to stay? Tame. Researchers now think the key lies in ultra-small scale interactions between air masses, stuff we can't even measure yet. It's like trying to predict a sneeze from 20 feet away. There's a growing field called tornado genesis, the study of exactly how tornadoes form. And it's not just academic. The better we understand these storms, the better we can predict them. And that means lives saved. So, yeah, tornadoes are scary. But the chase to understand them, that might be even more powerful. Science may not stop the wind, but it can teach us how to get out of its way.